I've tried to say something about death in in uh, in things that I have written, um, but I always find myself um, dependent on uh, the uh, the Epicurean answer to the question of death, which is already in the speech that Socrates gives to the jurors who acquitted him as, as uh, presented by Plato in the Apology of Socrates. Epicurus, who drew this strand from Socrates to its completion and conclusion, has never been surpassed. Epicurus, the Epicureans, have never been surpassed on this. What they say is, um, once you are dead, you know you do not regret being dead. You are nothing. You came from nothing and you go to nothing. Your existence is a moment of being. So don't worry about the afterlife. There is none. There is no eternal punishment. That was one consolation the Epicureans were uh, insisted on giving. There is what, what the book of Revelation calls the second death. There's nothingness. But look, before you were born, you were nothing, and you didn't want to be born. You weren't there clamoring for birth. You were nothing. And that's the nothing you become again. So the answer is, if possible, imagine yourself now while you're alive, being dead. And Socrates imagines it, imagines it and says, it's like a night of dreamless sleep. This is the rationalist sublime, this attitude towards death. It is very hard for most people to live with, and it has nothing to do with their level of education. It seems to me this is the only reasonable thing to think about being dead. You can still not want to die. Socrates makes it clear he does not wish to be dead. In the Phaedo, he says, well, death is the release of the soul from the prison of the body, but that's not the Socrates of the Apology, who's clear-eyed absolutely without illusion. He says death is one of two things. It's either a, a dreamless sleep or it is a chance in the kingdom of Hades to go on speculating about the life of mortals uh, while, they're, while they're alive and to, and to ask the dead what they made of their lives and what their reflections on their life lives are now that they're dead. Well, Socrates didn't believe that there was an afterlife in which he could examine Achilles and Ajax and so on and so forth. No. Socrates was a rationalist. He, he made the rationalism sublime, and he made it sublime by saying, live as well and as long as you can provided you do not compromise yourself too badly. And then know that when the end comes, it is the end. And what is that end? It's not eternal punishment. It's a dreamless sleep. And he adds, I don't know if you personally would want to add what he adds to this. He says, there are not many days that I have spent in my life and not many nights that I have spent which have had, which are as good as those nights when I had nothing, dreamless sleep. I don't know if most people would be prepared to judge their lives as Socrates did, but he didn't commit suicide, though, even though he could have escaped his death sentence. He wouldn't have been Socrates if he had tried to escape. He knew that. He didn't want to die. 
He was 70. That's enough, perhaps, uh, enough of a life. Who's to say? But he was persuaded that uh, there was nothing to fear in after death, and uh, it, it is just like what you were like before you were born and just like dreamless sleep. That's, it, is, it is a sublimity. It is the rationalist sublime. Most thinkers are incapable of it. Thinkers. But if more of us could become capable of it, uh, I think that is the one answer that can be given, and it's a very poor, cold answer. But uh, it's almost by definition that a society e exists in order to cover over the fact of, of death as nothingness, as the return to nothingness. Most belief systems do not uh, try to uh, uh, encourage that belief. And in Rousseau's social contract, um, one of the tenets of the civil religion is that there is an afterlife in which virtue is rewarded and sin is punished. And if you can't believe it, you are banished from that society. And Locke, as you know, denied toleration to atheists, even though he was, if not one himself, in the eyes of many of his contemporaries, he was one. That's why he never, oh, not never, but uh, didn't uh, acknowledge authorship of some of his books. Um, is atheism, the, atheism including the belief in no afterlife, including also no gods, no overall meaning, no purpose to life? As Hobbes put it, nature has, God has, God has no ends. This is Hobbes in the 17th century. No wonder they wanted to burn his books, and him too, probably. Um, can a whole society be organized around, around the truth? None has ever been. That is a, that is a very good question. Um, Um, friends tend not to lie to each other, but I could imagine um, one friend saying to another, um, and the other is lying in bed wait, waiting to die. Remember Socrates um, and what he said. Um, it may be true, he may be right, it is nothingness. If it's nothingness, soon you'll be relieved of your suffering. Um, but then the person must, lying in bed waiting to die musters enough intellectual strength to say, but I will miss life. And then the friend says, but no, you won't miss life once you're dead. person lying in bed persists and says, I want more of what I've had. How is that? And the friend says, in your place I would too, but no one can give you that. And there the conversation has to stop. I don't know what else could be said. 